this works. Going live. You are live. Okay, yay. <laughs> I'm live, apparently. Welcome, everybody. Whoever is here already. Hopefully, I don't have an echo or anything. You'll have to let me know. And also, I'm always paranoid that... Oh, good. Digital's here. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm always paranoid that my chat isn't working because at one time I streamed and the chat wasn't Like I didn't see anything, but apparently everyone was talking so I had to refresh YouTube to get the ch the live chat. It was super weird. So that always makes me paranoid now Um, how is the level of music? Is it too loud or too quiet? I'm gonna turn it down on my side. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. Fry yay. Sounds good? Okay, cool. Hey guys, it's good to see everybody. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone's coming in. Okay, I'm gonna make chat bigger actually. Cause I'm blind. Hello, hey Arlene from Pennsylvania. <laughs> and uh, I also make my screen, everything fit better, there we go first time welcome hey everyone so just a heads up uh, this video will be um, it'll, it'll stay on my channel as a live replay so you can watch it again in the future or if you're here from the future hello <laughs> uh, I'm gonna add it to my drawing videos I guess and we're gonna be drawing rocks sketching rocks, I should say, in my sketchbook. And I invite you to pick up your own sketchbook or a piece of paper, whatever you like to draw on, and join me. I'll be using loose inspiration today. So I have this Pinterest board called Rocks, and it's pretty, um, if it doesn't pop up in a second there in chat, I'll add it to chat. I don't know why I'm having issues lately with my my bot. Oh, there we go. Yay, it worked. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, you can open that Pinterest board and I'm there's there's art, there's paintings, there's also reference photos and it's all just mixed together. And so I'm going to be looking at some of the more recent reference photos that I posted in there as like loose inspiration. I like to just glance at them once in a while to kind of get that creative spark going. Um, because sometimes I get stuck in my ways and I like need to open my mind again. I need to think outside of the box, outside of the rock, <laughs> outside of the canyon. <laughs> and yeah, just having those photos in front of me really helps. We're going to be rocking and rolling. <laughs> should have rock music on, shouldn't I? And everyone is going to have... Um, a, ch a chance to offer their best rock pun <laughs> today. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Noreen. <laughs> I'm glad it's helpful and, and fun to watch. Hey, Lady T. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, Wolfie is, I mean, I'm <laughs> Wolfie. <laughs> Wolfie's at work. Floki is sleeping behind me in his little basket like a cute little boy so I'm gonna let him sleep for as long as he will <laughs> Vader is outside in the freezing cold snow but it's sunny out so uh, yeah, he's fine <laughs> but we've been having crazy cold weather here it was like negative 13 C yesterday and 
Yeah, I'm all bundled up as you can see. I want him to be a blanket burrito because I'm always a blanket burrito when I sketch. <laughs> Usually I'm sketching on the couch or in bed, but we're here live on stream. So I brought the burrito to you. <laughs> My leg is better, although the bruise is horrific. It's like dark purple and blue and it's crazy. <laughs> it's healing, but it's it goes it goes through those color changes. Uh yeah, no worries, Xenium. Hope you enjoy it. Your favorite white wine is Chardonnay. Oh, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, me too. And then I realized you're doing a pun. <laughs> Hey Lucy, you made it! Hello! So if anyone wants to sketch with me, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of talk through my process and we'll have some really chill sketching together and we can just talk and hang out. I figured I would stream for just like a couple hours, one or two hours. And of course, ask questions if you need to. And I saw, yes, this is blue lead. Um, I always get this question, so I brought, I dug this out of my bag. I use a few different types. So depending on what mechanical pencil I'm, I have, I have two sizes. This is my 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. It's just a Pentel, pretty straightforward. I mean, they're all very similar. <laughs> And because it's 0.5, I got this one, Stedler Mars Micro Blue. I also have red and green, but I don't use those that much. Um, for my bigger mechanical pencil, I have this one and it's pretty similar. I think this one's darker blue though. So yeah, here's, these are my red and green ones. I actually need to order more of this because I only have I only have two, no, three pieces left in here and and there's only one in this right now, so. And um, I don't have, I have an eraser nearby, but I try, this is actually really hard to erase, this blue lead. So it encourages me not to get obsessed with, or like, I don't care if I make a mistake, basically. <laughs> I just move forward and it's also great because I don't have to worry about losing my eraser because I'm always moving around when I sketch. And yeah, I'll show you guys. Oh, and this sketchbook is this brand. And it's a uh, grid paper. It's actually very th pretty thin paper, but it doesn't, this particular pencil doesn't really show through that much. Um, you didn't know I was hurt? <laughs> Wait. Oh, how's his leg? Oh! <laughs> Lady T, I completely misread that. Yeah, so a few days ago, I was walking in the forest, taking photos, and I was about to launch my drone. This is, I'm gonna keep the story short and we don't have to go into it, but it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I was walking through the forest. It had just snowed like six inches or more and the f the whole forest floor was covered in beautiful fresh powder and oh my god i was like going insane with the how with how beautiful the light was so i was just like looking everywhere to take photos and i was in a new part of the forest and all of a sudden i was going down and not only was i going down um i was going down into freezing cold ice water and i went up above my belly button and at one point and all my drone, my phone, the drone controller, my Sony ZV-1 camera all went under. And it was, I'm not even gonna, <laughs> I finally climbed my way out, which was horrifying because as I turned around to climb out, the ice broke. And then I tried to climb out and the ice broke again. And then it kept breaking. And then I dropped my phone again. And I had to like dig down in the water for my phone. And it was just like, I was just freaking out and swearing and trying to get out and I, like my all my legs are just all my legs i mean my le both of my legs are covered in bruises and i have one on my upper leg that is just like really really sore <laughs> but 
it was and I was like in shock the whole day I just couldn't believe it and I was horrified about my equipment and but it's been a few days and my drone works my drone controller works my phone worked instantly because it's like rated for being underwater and the Sony though the Sony camera it works but there's water behind the lens there's like condensation on the inside of the lens so that is currently sitting in rice for a while longer <laughs> it's been in rice ever since it happened it's a bag of sealed rice and that apparently like draws out the moisture so we'll see how that goes but i'm really worried about it and yeah so there's my story it was horrible and I laugh about it now, or I like can like talk about it easily now, but yeah, it was one of the worst, scariest experiences of my life. So let's draw rocks. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I, I think you may have seen some of these in recent videos. I don't know which ones I've shown or maybe on Instagram stories. By the way, this is a cliff side. So like you're standing on the edge of the ocean looking down at some cliffs, but Wolfie, when he saw it, he thought he was looking down at the landscape from above and that these were like lakes in the landscape. And that annoyed me so bad <laughs> because I couldn't, I mean like I can't unsee it now. <laughs> so anyways, um, some canyons. I think this one is the thumbnail for this video, actually. Those are just some random sketches. I don't know. Sometimes it just gets really weird. Um, this is one thing I'm going to do today on stream. This is something that I like to practice when I'm warming up. It just helps me think about shading and line weight and stuff like that and also gets me thinking about creative shapes so sometimes they'll just be round like this or other times you can make like jagged shapes but it's all about making it look like the stones are balancing obviously <laughs> and that is a really fun exercise so we can do that together um, just some weird stuff and that's kind of like the balancing rocks, but they're all connected, sort of. <laughs> and this is also another thing that is easy to transition to from doing those balancing rocks. So yeah, let's do some sketching. <laughs> Thank you, lady. So that's why I thought you meant you were asking about my leg. <laughs> Floki's leg is also totally fine now. He spent a few days limping uh, and we still don't really know why, but yeah, he's back to normal. He's sprinting around the room when he's awake. By the way, the shrooms looked on the... Oh yeah, shaky. What, what kind did you get? What, just curious. What brand? I know some brands have uh, lighter versions of the colors and other oh and also some brands are really hard to erase so it depends on like if you need to erase you build them in real life i've done it a little bit but not much and i don't know how i don't think i'm very good at it but when we go out hiking we often see balancing stones okay i'm actually gonna move this kind of to the side i think and then down a little. Um, just because it'll give a little bit of a better angle, I think, and be closer. Is anyone going to be drawing with me or sketching? I mean, I mean, you don't have to be doing what I'm doing. Just curious whoever's, whoever is arting along with me. The other thing, or the one thing I don't like about this lead is that it breaks really easily. It's a kind of softer lead and I love it for, I love it for that reason as well because it's easy to shade and just look like easy to get the line weights that I want. 
but it's constantly breaking. So I can only keep about that much out of the pencil and even that will break a lot. <laughs> so it's a constant, like I'm always doing this, <laughs> but it's kind of annoying, but I, I deal with it because I like how it looks. You're doing a paint along style draw, draw along. <laughs> You're sketching, cool. Okay, so the first thing to start, the first thing I do almost every time I sketch any kind of rocks is just make a random, a random mark. So with balancing stones, it's a lot of fun because uh, you can either like work slowly and build up your shapes or you can just be like really intuitive and then like draw a bunch of shapes on top of each other and or they're like spheres or circles or they can be like kind of bumpy like this but they always start kind of like this so I either start with cubes or spheres sorry it's kind of like struggling to focus um, so just to start off, draw a few, I guess if you want to be sketching with me and drawing along with me, just start off with some circles. Sometimes I like to make some of them a little bit longer, so they're more like ovals, and other times they'll be... Sorry, I lose my train of thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be almost like perfect circles. But going back to this, um, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that even after I'm done, there's still a lot of guidelines visible. If you look really close, you can see some of the lines uh, like here. But when you when you look at it really like any distance away you don't really see that and it doesn't matter and it's just a sketch anyway <laughs> so doing those initial guidelines gets me kind of gets just gets the pencil flowing and this is also a really good warm-up for um, practicing line weight as well as shading so it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm starting out um, for a rock drawing session, especially if I'm doing a commission of some kind that will have a lot of rocks in it. I'll just get my sketchbook or some scrap paper and do this. Um, yeah, so then once I draw my guidelines, I usually at the top of the, the rock where it'll be touching another rock, I start to darken that bit. And then at the bottom, I start to darken that. And it also just gets me practicing, again, the line weights, so... Oh, I forgot. I can't zoom in very well. Um, yeah, so just actually... And the other thing is, if you have your guidelines and af as you start to draw the more solid lines over them, a lot of times what happens to me is I'm like, oh, why did I draw the guideline like that? That's stupid. So then as I'm drawing, I completely change how it looks. <laughs> so if I like initially I added these three little balls here, um, but as I'm going, I might change that to be kind of a weird shape, like off to the side or I don't know, just change it in some way. So lots of overlapping lines, but as you're doing it, I tend to work really quickly when I'm doing this. Um, and because of that, I have a lot of lo like little lines that kind of go this way and that way. Um, but it's okay. The other fun thing about this is like seeing if you, or I guess getting used to, if you've ever seen balancing rocks, it's always interesting to see how sometimes Um, like they'll be slightly leaning almost like this they're like slightly off center but they're leaning in a way where it helps them balance um, like this one this one is obviously like leaning to the side or kind of diagonal but it's still it just the weight of it I guess is balancing so it just is this is a fun way to kind of start thinking about the weight of rocks and like how 
And then when you go to do something more elaborate like this, how one thing might be, it, it might have to like lean really far to the left in order to support something over here. Or I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> They're break proof. Okay, sorry, just making sure I didn't miss any questions. All right, sounds good, Darlene. Is that to be? Um, doesn't say, does it? It's it's called Studler Mars Micro Blue. It's very soft. So yeah, I start to darken the bottom of it where the, the rocks touch and the top as it kind of comes over and I just continue up. Also, I don't know if you guys saw it already, but I posted a video today <laughs> all about color. All right, now I have all of my rocks kind of in a position that I'm happy with. And then what I like to do, because it's okay to have just like perfectly smooth rocks, like I sometimes practice that, like with these ones, you can see they are like pe smooth pebbles almost. Um, but then these ones have a little more uh, variety in the surface. So there's some cracks, there's some bumps and stuff like that. So depending on what kind you wanna draw, what I like to do is draw some guidelines that sort of help me envision what the surface, what is happening on the surface. So for instance, uh, let's say on this rock, it looks really smooth at the moment, but I want there to be like a, a divot there. I'll draw a guideline like that, and then later when I'm shading, I know I have to make a little bit of a shadow there because it's kind of... There's like something going on there. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I do for all of them. I just continue on with these guidelines like this. I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong at this point. It's totally just you're inventing stuff on the fly. Um, and you don't have to do these guidelines if you don't need to. Like some, some people might be able to totally just envision it and draw the final thing. But I really need these guidelines. <laughs> I guess sometimes I don't, but most of the time I do. So, so it kind of becomes a little bit wavy and swirly. And we'll just continue that on the rest of them. Let's try to finish this warm up in about five to 10 minutes, okay? So I don't want to pressure anybody, but I try to stay, I try to keep my warm ups slower, or I mean, quicker because music is a little too high. Okay. I was wondering about that because the, oops, uh, the s vocals were also kind of annoying me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like to keep my warm ups a little bit sh shorter because the whole point is to just keep the pencil flowing. You're not just supposed to be sitting there obsessing over details. It's just a warm up. But let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, sometimes as I'm doing this, I will draw a guideline, but I'll fill it in a little bit. Um, and it just helps me think about where the shadows are going to be later. Uh, I don't always notice I'm doing it, so I'm sorry if I'm like skipping around with my explanation. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like 
In my brain, somehow I decided the left side is going to be the shadow side for the most part, so I, st I already started filling in those areas. Um, and I like to keep, I like to layer my shading. So if you look really close, you can see, um, <clears throat> actually it's hard to see, <laughs> it's hard to tell, but this is probably like three layers of shading, especially in the darker areas. So it's like a little bit of shading. And then I kind of think if, or I, I look at it and see if it's, it's actually looking right and then I'll shade the rest. So it might be like two or three more pass overs until it gets till I get it right why does my drawing look so wrong <laughs> um I don't know can I see it <laughs> somehow <laughs> hey Sophia you decide where the light comes from yeah that's what I was just saying so uh you know just pick a side pick a pick an angle it doesn't matter it's up to you do you live stream at the same time every Friday? Not every single Friday, but if I live stream on Fridays, it's pretty much at this time. Um, there were, in the past, I kind of experimented with times, but but 3 p.m. my time works really, really well. Uh, seems like it works pretty well for most people. I know not everyone can join in because of, you know, time zones, <laughs> but uh, either way, like you can re watch the replay. Sweden gets to gets gold in the biathlon. Nice, <laughs> congrats. Um, yeah, let's keep going. Since I'm the one saying I want to keep the warm up short, this is kind of a stylistic choice. But if you look at a lot of my rocks, you can see that I do outline them kind of with a hard line most most of the time. Um, sometimes I use the, the darker outline in a, in a way so that I can make one piece stand out from the rest of it, but other times, like these ones, they're all outlined pretty dark, and then there's, shop, there's soft shading on the inside, but that is a stylistic thing. You don't have to do that. And also, it's sometimes it's a, it's a way that I use to like think about light. <laughs> you rock. That's like the easiest pun you could have said. But thank you. So I, on my shadow side, I'll definitely make my lines a little bit darker. I have kind of shaky hands, so it's uh, sometimes I get really weird lines. <laughs> um, yeah, and then once I'm kind of happy with, uh, um, at this point I need to be happy with my decisions because I've already darkened the lines and this is really hard to erase. Plus I don't have my eraser, so I'm, I'm just thinking about moving on. Um, so once I have those lines where I want them, then I'll start thinking about my shading. Confused about the, with the shaping, it's hard to see what you're doing. It's hard to see, is it? Um, maybe I can adjust the contrast of my camera. Configure video. Is everyone having trouble seeing this? I increased the contrast a little, maybe that will help. Make the camera go down a little bit. I'm gonna like hit my head on the camera now. <laughs> um, but what it comes down to, Xenium, is that 
you are inventing your own shapes. So like I said, just start off with circles, something really easy like circles or ovals. And then from there, you're just stacking them up on top of each other in whatever uh, sizes you want or whatever. If, if they're ovals, you, you know, you can choose which way they're leaning. And then building up and then starting to darken your lines as you think they uh, need to be. I mean, you don't have to draw an outline around each one like I'm doing. Again, a lot of my things, my, what I'm doing is stylistic choices. <laughs> so you might have a different style of drawing. Maybe you don't like outlining things at all and you don't want all these guidelines showing, then you're probably gonna stick with like just the basic shape to start with and then you'll start shading maybe. I don't know. Um, but I'm about to shade so we can kind of talk about that now. And when it comes to shading these ones, it's pretty simple because they're just round for the most part. So I usually start with really soft lines. And this, like I said, this is super good practice for shading, um, or should I say pencil control? Because if you're new to shading, it might be really hard to get like an even coating of pencil, of lead on there, of graphite. But it comes with practice like it's all about muscle memory and control of your hand and o over time you get really good at making making marks where you want them to be <laughs> um, but in terms of lighting the since the lights coming from like this direction my shadows are going to be on the left side of most of these if the rocks are darker, so the, the actual color of the rock is dark, you can shade in the whole rock, but then add a little extra shading on the shadow side. Because you don't have to make all your rocks the same um, material or color. That's up to you. But we only have one color to work with. We have, well, technically we have two. We have the color of the paper and the color of our pencil. So we have to kind of use our we have to work within those limitations. Um, when I'm doing the shading on these, I often start with just like a little bit on the left or whatever the shadow side is, and then uh, and do that on every single rock until I kind of get a feel for it. Um, and then I can come back with my second or third layer and figure out if I want to make anything stand out. So yeah, let's just keep shading. Sometimes I use big lines, sometimes I use little lines, like sometimes I just do this. And by doing that, the lines are separated. <laughs> so that is also kind of a style, a stylized choice. Um, but then in other places on the rock, they're going to be closer together and more soft looking. Traditional prehistoric rock fragments. So, so, okay. Yeah, so you can decide how you want to shade. Some people really like cross hatching. Cross hatching is actually great for building depth in a piece. So, you, basically, by that, you're just doing your lines one way and then you come back in the opposite direction and shade on top of that. And it, it kind of quickly builds up the values, builds up the depth. I don't know about you guys, but I have trouble drawing even lines unless I'm going like this. So if I change the angle of my pencil, I have I struggle so much <laughs> with with like pressure control or just getting everything even. So instead of turning my hand, I'll often just turn my my paper, but I'm not doing that on stream because it's harder to see. And I'm also not really worrying if it goes outside of the lines so you can see really close. There's definitely some overlap there. Uh, everything isn't perfect, but again, we're just sketching. Just get warmed up.
So as I said earlier, um, I have like, sometimes my guidelines will tell me if there's like an imperfection in the rock or if there's like a crack or something going on, like a, a little divot. So I can add some shading to that as well. Sometimes I'll put another dark line if I want to. It almost, it almost looks like an apple. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I can use I can use those guidelines or I can just ignore them. But I'll just continue shading the rest of them so that they're all kind of even. So yeah, if you're brand new to drawing rocks, I definitely recommend um, this as a warm up. And also not just like drawing smooth rocks like this, like you can do this stacking thing. And the only reason I like doing the stacking thing is because it's fun and it's it's fun to come up with like creative um, versions of this, of this balancing rocks. You can draw anything, but I like doing this as my warm up. And you can try it with smooth rocks. You can try it with like bumpy rocks or really sharp rocks. It's really fun to kind of change it up and just do like two or three of these at the beginning of your session. And it helps so much to like get you in the rock mindset. They turn their page constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thanks, lady. Yeah, so if anyone doesn't know, I also have a really in-depth rock drawing class on Skillshare. So that talks about how I build up from like basic shapes and how I do different types of rocks. And it goes through like how to draw them and also how to paint them digitally, also with watercolor and gouache. And it goes into a lot of stuff. So if you're interested in like going more in-depth, then you can go check that out. There's a link there in chat, um, or it's in the description below. And you get two weeks free if you use my link, if you haven't already signed up for Skillshare. <laughs> But it's kind of cool because then you can watch my classes and any other classes you want on Skillshare. It supports me, it supports my channel. And if you watch other artists, you're supporting them as well, which is really awesome because to get paid on Skillshare or you, you get paid per watched minute on Skillshare, like a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a penny per minute watched. <laughs> so it really is all about the, the views adding up and the minutes adding up. And yeah, you can su easily support an artist by watching their videos. <laughs> I guess it's kind of the same on YouTube, but I don't really know how, I don't know exactly how it works on YouTube. <laughs> no doors? What do you mean, doors? All right, we're almost done with the initial shading. Oh, I just realized I'm turning the page. I didn't mean to. I have to, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so hard not to. So you can see I kind of like messed around with the shape of some of these. So they're not perfectly round. They have little, little things going on. Um, and then once I do that, once I get all the general shading done, just so I can kind of see how it's looking. I like to add little um, like detail lines or cracks because it's really rare when you find a rock that's perfect. 
I love adding little imperfections or I don't know what it would it's not an imperfection just like little things to break up the big shapes so like for instance I'll add um, I don't know just like little dots or cracks and the initial guidelines kind of help me at this point to figure out what direction my crack lines are going to show or which um yeah how the, the direction that they're going to be going in crack lines that sounds bad <laughs> don't do drugs so yeah that i guess that's why i really like doing those initial guidelines for myself it just keeps everything really straightforward and easy to keep track of. So yeah, and that, and really all I'm doing for these crack lines are pressing hard with my pencil so it's darker than the shading lines. So it's it's really subtle. But when you do a lot of little ones, and sometimes you can make them bigger, um, make them more noticeable, uh, it just kind of all adds up to look a little bit more varied, a little more natural, in my opinion. Ah, pencil broke. Um, yeah, now I can kind of just darken anything that needs to be darkened and just keep going. But we want to keep this form up short. Did you guys see one of the reference photos in the Pinterest board that you're interested in drawing? Because I'll draw whichever one you want. Or we can just like use it as loose inspiration. Also, I have a little bit of shading on almost all the sides of the rocks because it just helps kind of indicate that they are really round, um, not just, they're, they're not little like, flat anywhere. So there's some shading, there's some white space showing through on little areas of them, but for the most part, there's shading. All right, digital, I'll see you later. Um, and then the last thing I'll do is just add the shadow cast on the ground, which is really subtle. I don't wanna go too crazy with this, uh, but I just look at the direction of the light and paint the shadow in the opposite way. And make it a little bit darker just under the rock. And that's that. <laughs> it would be fun to make like rocks fruit but rock fruit. I don't know if you know what I mean. Drawing fruit, or I mean drawing rocks that kind of look like fruit. <laughs> no requests about specific rocks that you saw. I will pick one then. But most of the times we're not, I'm not copying the reference. I like to just use it to get me thinking differently. Ocean Rock, Pam Johnson Studio. 
Um, let me look. Where is that? Oh, those ones. Okay. Uh, so coastal. <laughs> I guess it doesn't super matter what we're drawing. Which ones we we are? I mean. But if you if that's the kind of rock you are interested in, let's flip the page. Uh, once again, I just start off with basic shapes. So if I'm thinking about a bunch of rocks sitting on the shore or coming up out of the water or something, um, I will start off with usually circles, but sometimes squares. And I like to overlap them. So, oh my gosh, it's so light. You can kind of just barely see my lines. So these two are just overlapping and maybe there's one down here as well. Obviously the water is going to be coming in front of these so they won't have like a round bottom or any kind of bottom showing, but we'll just start with those. And then from there, so once I have just a general guide, which is super light, <laughs> I will try to see that circle or if it's a cube I'll try to see that cube in 3d and this is something that takes practice as well but you you know just keep doing it keep trying and once I can visualize it in 3d I can start to chisel away like literally I know that's kind of a rock pun but I chisel away from that shape to get my rock I get to get to the rock shape I want but having that circle or that cube to start with just helps me keep the sh overall shape having just more volume to it. I, I don't want, or at mass, I don't want it to be flat. I don't want it to be 2D. Um, let's actually take this one as reference because it's kind of easier to see everything with the shading. So we'll just use this one that's in the rock Pinterest board, that one as our loose inspiration. Uh, yeah, so once I have my initial just kind of general guidelines, I'm if you want, we can kind of look at the reference photo for the outline or um, if, you, if you need to, you can just copy it exactly. Uh, but I, I already started to break away from my circle. <laughs> I'm just like letting the pencil flow wherever it wants to. Because half the time when I'm drawing rocks, I, I just draw random lines until it looks right. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Like I, if I want it to look organic, I need to let the pencil flow. I can't just like obsess over every single line and angle. <gasps> Hi baby. Hi little boy. Hi. <laughs> Vader's home. You can tell because he's so loud. Old kitty, <gasps> you are freezing and there's ice in your paws. Oh my gosh. Good night, Becky. See you later. Oh my goodness, get warm. How many mouses did you eat? Did you eat all the mouses? Oh, he's so cold and I can't believe his little paws. Flo Floki gets cuddles too after. Hi! Did you just wake up? Your brother's home. Yeah. You can go play. This is the cutest little boy. <laughs> He's the cutest. Okay. Go play with your brother. No. It's so cute when they are reunited after like sleeping for the night or Vader coming home from being outside because <laughs> Floki gets all like cuddly and I mean he starts with like a few cuddles and then he instantly tries to attack Vader to play and <laughs> Vader's like ugh great. Um. Oh, 
Vader has a cat flap that's chip activated, so it only opens for his chip. Luckily, that's very convenient. <laughs> that's kind of how they all come nowadays. Well, not all of them, but we looked for one specifically. All right, so back to the drawing. As I was saying, I'm chiseling away at this outline, this shape, and I'm um, just mostly sticking with the outline of my rock. So I will kind of like try different things and not everything I do will work. Like sometimes I draw something and I'm like, why did I do it like that? <laughs> and it's especially annoying when I don't have an eraser, but I just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> um, and at this point, I'm not thinking about lighting at all. It's literally just shape. Lighting, lighting can come later. Uh, but a lot of times with rocks, on the coast you they kind of like come up out of the water diagonally uh, depending on like what like here in Scotland there's so many places I've been on the coast where we have these like massive shards of rock coming up at a diagonal out of the ocean and that's really fun to draw because there's like so many cool repetitive uh, lines um, so that's something I tend to gravitate towards when I'm painting my coastal rocks. Um, doing shadows in general, what would work better? Looking at the reference photo in black and white or leaving it normal? Would either one make it easier? Black and white definitely makes it easier for me anyway. Like I almost always, if I need to copy a reference photo for whatever reason, I turn it to black and white because it's, First of all, it makes sh seeing the shadows and in, in the highlights easier. And when I go to paint it, I'm never going to paint it how it looks in the reference photo. So there's no point in having all that color just confuse my brain. Mechanical pencils. That's all I use, Jenny. Like I sometimes, maybe like 5% of the time I'm drawing, I use a graphite pencil, regular pencil, but if I'm sketching, especially, I only use a mechanical pencil. It's not always with blue lead. I just love how blue lead looks in this sketchbook. <laughs> All right. So you can already see how far I've deviated from my initial circles. Like this rock down here, this circle, this guideline is now this rock and this initial circle, this circle right here, is way different as my rock. But that's, again, they're just there to kind of help me visualize things. And I know everyone has their own tools and techniques they use to, to help themselves do that better. Um, I recommend trying lots of different strategies and see which one sticks and see which ones you can build on. All right. Um, so we'll keep it simple for this one uh, and just kind of stick with three little three shapes. Um, and as I said earlier, like if the rock is coming out of the water, the ocean itself or the water itself is kind of cutting off the bottom of our rock. So in this case, sorry, anything with vocals distracts me. Uh, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Let me know if the music is too loud again. I'm off. I didn't choose. I choose a. I chose a Beats playlist because I didn't want to accidentally get Christmas music again, like the last stream. But I might have to go back to to like acoustic or something. Maybe we could do. Um, let's see. Go for peaceful. This will be more chill. Anyways, okay, so where the rock is coming out of the water, 
I am kind of drawing like these squiggly lines. So I'll show you really quick. So the bottom of the rock is not visible, but it's not a straight line. Cause if it's a straight line, it'll be really, um, unnatural looking. So it looks weird at first, but if that's where you start with, it'll make sense later. <laughs> so at the bottom of the rock, I'm just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's like little back and forth, up and down. I kind of just make it as varied as I can. Hey, little heartling. Okay. Um, and then once I have the overall shapes kind of started, I, I will start thinking about light, but I'm not going to stick too strictly to what I'm doing next. I, I'm, it's like, I'm going to just try things basically. <laughs> uh, maybe just cause I'm not a professional at this yet. I, I haven't got everything down to a science, but for me, trying things is the easiest way to progress. <laughs> so if well, we'll just stick with light, the light being on the right side again, cause that's what I've been doing today. Uh, and because of the light is on the right side, I'll start shading on the left. And I just try to start slow and here and there I'll make my shade, my shading go all the way to the other side. And then in other areas I won't, I'll like, as I'm doing this, I'm starting to see the shapes of the rocks, like the different planes of the rock, uh, reveal themselves. And I respond to that in the moment. So I, that's like the hardest thing for me to share because it is so much like a in the moment thing for me, but already I'm starting to see how like different pieces of the rock are appearing. And here and there, I'll try a little darker, or if you have an eraser, you can always come back and like erase something. Um, and you know, the, because we're see, because we're using such light shading lines, all you have to do at this point, cause like, I'm going to keep using a really light shade later. Like if I decided, oh, this isn't really right. Like something is off about it. Um, all I have to do is come back with darker shading and adjust it and I'll have different planes. And that's also a whole other th uh, a thing to think about is shadows have shadows. <laughs> like in the shadows of your shadows, there's gonna be more shadows. <laughs> Endless shadows. Um, but one thing that I find that really helps is I know I, I talked about this in today's video that I posted, but observing from life, like just going to the coast and sitting and staring <laughs> for like hours. And sometimes I draw, sometimes I don't. Um, so as I'm, drew, as I'm drawing these and I'm, I'm starting to shade it, I'm like, oh yeah, that kind of looks like those rocks I saw at that one beach, how they were like really, they had really long diagonal pieces. And then I'll like take that memory and run with it. Um, and just like we did in the warm up with this, the balancing rocks at this point, like all the shading is kind of in there. Then I can come back with like darker detail lines. Like there's going to be a lot of little cracks and crevices. And one thing I love to do with my, with my line, my, um, more defined lines is define the shape of the rock with them. But th that's also a stylized thing. Like, uh, you don't have to do that. It's just something that I really like to do. Like add a few extra dark lines here and there. And when you zoom out, oh, <laughs> when you zoom out, things start to look a little bit more alive. Like they have, they have more depth. Um, and I'll just move on to the bigger rock and do the same thing. So now that I have, uh, I'm just going to lay in some really light shading until I start to see things appear. And 
and sometimes I will do like you know how I just said I like to add the darker lines at the end I love doing that like if I'm struggling to see the form of something I will do it whenever I want I don't have to wait until the end so for instance on this big rock like I can sh sometimes struggle with big bigger shapes like this so I will just choose something like to f I'll, I'll put a line like that and now I have to work with that now I have to move forward <laughs> and sometimes it breaks me out of that moment of what the heck am I doing <laughs> how am I gonna make this work and then I just go for it and then I just have to to like make it work so I'm like picturing all these little cracks on this rock like it's coming up out of the water but it's really uh, jagged and maybe falling apart I don't know <laughs> obviously they're all kind of falling apart right they're getting eroded away by the water Also, I'm sorry if the cats are really loud when they're playing. They're often uh, meowing. Vader meows so much when they play. Um, thank you, Alatarel. Is that? I don't know. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. You struggle with that. Which which thing do you struggle with, Lady T? Doing little boys. Come here, Vader. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. You just came in, so you don't need your collar. I have him wear this super reflective collar when he's outside because he's a black cat, and when he stays out after it's dark, which is rare, it happens sometimes, I get really scared <laughs> and I want him to be reflective <laughs> what a good boy now you can be go go be a silent hunter and hunt your brother <laughs> all right so I have this initial shading down and Within the, this shadow side, there's also going to be lots of uh, things happening, like different levels and stuff, different planes. But I just start slow and I just see what sticks, see what happens when I do it. Not as loud as your dog as well. <laughs> I imagine that's true, yeah. See, the thing is, with with rocks especially, I don't know what it is, but it seems like I, I literally don't know any shortcuts to getting to the point where I can just see the rock and draw the rock. Like, the things I show you guys in this session and also in the Skillshare class, that's like hours and years worth of just figuring crap out on the fly and like oh that kind of worked so I'll try that again but like maybe tweak it a little bit and I mean there's people out there who can just sit down and draw amazing epic rock scenes and they it's like they don't even think about it obviously they are but like they're so it just seems so natural to them and I don't know if it's because someone taught them some secrets or if it's because they've just been doing it for so many hours and thousands of hours that it's like, you know, second nature to them. But I started off drawing rocks as like the most minimal, ugly things you can imagine. And it wasn't until many, 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 many hours of practice of trying and failing and trying and failing and, and like just tons of repetition that I started to sort of see things in the rocks and the patterns. So don't feel bad if it's frustrating, if, it, if you struggle with that. And drawing rocks is so different than painting rocks. And like, I, I can show you guys an example. This is what I did today for my 100 day challenge, which I've posted on Instagram. So you may have seen it. Um, 
but it's a canyon painting and I painted this I, I originally painted this like 2016 no actually maybe 2016 um, I painted it with watercolor and I was I, I literally had no clue what I was doing I was just looking at a bunch of pictures uh, here it is and I still like the original where fit to screen sorry I still like the original uh, but it was really small a really small original like four by six but it was the biggest struggle and I just felt like doing it today to kind of get a feel for if it was a struggle or not and when I did this today it was not a struggle at all so I could see I could like feel the difference in how that process happened like oh my god like literally that first painting this one from 2016 or 17 was total luck in my opinion <laughs> like it's so it, it was I don't know how I did it because back then I just did not know what was going on <laughs> but um today when I was painting it I was making the decisions and how and like it's not perfect I'm not saying it's perfect and amazing but it it was a difference in how it felt to paint it so I'm just telling you guys this or showing you guys this because it's it happens over time and like watching people draw rocks and watching people paint rocks just kind of like letting it seep into your mind and I don't know like it, it builds up over time so I completely understand if it's frustrating <laughs> I have plenty of rock of rock drawings that just were abysmal <laughs> um all right so just gonna continue shading cutting away at the shapes some t like right now I'm not really thinking about anything I'm just shading and then eventually like a moment will happen I'll put a line somewhere or sh start shading somewhere and I'm like oh my god I see it I see the rock like like here I can now see that there's like a shadow because this is going back down shaping the rocks the crevices shadows making the rock look different from the next oh yeah lady t um yeah but that's also if, if you start off with like the just the basics and slowly build up the shapes like i am doing here uh i feel like that becomes a little easier each time you do it because once you've tried something and it didn't really work out you do it a little bit differently next time I mean that's the same with any kind of art I feel weird saying that because it's like duh Sarah <laughs> tell us something we don't know <laughs> but yeah it's it definitely takes some time and lots of lots of trying things So if I have a, a line that goes across the whole thing like this, I'll kind of shade near it because I imagine it's it's a, a little crack and just on the edge of that there will probably be a little bit of shadow. Um, there will be like a little lip of the rock that ca casts a shadow on itself. I swear rocks are one of those things that I'm like I think that's why it's so therapeutic to draw like half the time I just don't think I just do it I just put lines down and see what happens um it's so hard for me to explain I can't tell you how hard it was to like make that Skillshare class and to do this this stream right now <laughs> like it's I feel like such a fraud because half the time I'm just like figuring it out as I go like Oh, that that angle looks okay. Now let's do the next angle. All right, that angle worked. Let's do the next one. Um, but you don't really know what's going to work until you try it. And also, the more you observe rocks, whether it's from life or reference photos, you get a feel for what looks right and what doesn't. So that's the other side of it is like 
your homework is to go stare at rocks. <laughs> And if anyone asks you why you're doing that, just tell them I told you to. <laughs> um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions? Vader. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong, little boy? Yeah. What's wrong? Are you bored? Is Floki being weird upstairs? Sometimes Floki has his like zoomies, his kitten zoomies, and Vader's just sitting there watching him go nuts. <laughs> and he's like, what the heck? But Va Vader, you did the same thing. Vader had zoomies too. Or he might be complaining that he's now stuck inside. But. Vader, I'm sorry, you're not going back out in the dark in negative 5C. Silly boy. Ah, <sighs> how do I draw rocks? <laughs> Start with a line and then draw the next line and then the next one? <laughs> um, yeah. I'm showing you how I draw rocks. He's telling me what he did outside. It looks like you sneezed a circle on your... Okay. <laughs> oh, you're drawing digitally? Um, oh, let me see. Okay, first of all, I'm looking at yours in Discord. By the way, if anyone here is drawing with me and you want feedback live, just post it in the Discord chat, in the art chat. Um, so one thing I can say uh, is to practice drawing lighter lines, like be more sensitive to the line thickness, because if you use only big chunky lines, it's going to feel a little bit messier and a little bit harder to uh, kind of define the shapes. So start with light and then slowly thicken one side of it and slowly build up the darkness instead of letting all of them be the same. But again, that is also muscle memory and like uh, just really you become sent more sensitive to your line weights over time the more you do it. And it doesn't look like you sneezed. It looks like balancing rocks. Uh, the other thing that will really help yours is that you could add a little more shading. So pick a side, like for instance, pick a, pick the left side, whatever. Um, start doing really light shading because right now you don't really have any depth in there and it's kind of looking flat. But once you start adding a little bit of that shading, it will feel more realistic. <laughs> But it's looking really good already. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be like worried about that. Um Did you tag me? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow. You did the balancing rock. Awesome. I've been there in person. I used to live in Colorado. Yours are looking great. All right, what color are you using? Is that blue and purple? I like the red or sorry, red and blue. <laughs> Why did I say <laughs> red and blue makes purple? <laughs> Come on, brain. I like the look of the red. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Little pterodactyl, what are you doing? Hmm. 
Oh, it's pink. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Is there anything else you guys want to see? Any other ideas? Any? Uh. I feel like I've covered kind of everything. Like I've shown you what I do. So we could just sketch some more together if you want, or... Is there another reference that maybe you want to work from? Obviously my rocks coming out of the water don't really make sense unless there's water in there. <laughs> but yeah. There is a little art chat in the Discord channel if you want to post your photos of your sketches. I love doing, when I do the balancing rock ones, I love doing like a really skinny little one holding up a big one. Oh, that was the cutest. Oh, what's wrong, little Floki? What a good little boy. He's the cutest little meow. What a sweet little baby. Mm. Hey, Amy. Do I just need to practice, practice, practice? <laughs> yeah, we all do. Oh, what a little baby. Loki is coming on 10 weeks old, I think. What do you see? And he's a little crazy boy. He's he's a very good jumper. <laughs> uh, with his little kitten claws, he can jump up and like climb up almost anything. Aww. And he likes to go in his basket and like suck on the fabric of the basket like he's nursing on his mom. It's so cute. <laughs> Vader did the same exact thing with his blankie growing up. Oh, Fio, I just saw your drawing in Discord. That's beautiful. Like the shade, the shading, it makes it look like a lot of depth. That light is great. Good job. Um, um, you guys let me know if there's any other type of rock situation <laughs> that you want to want to look at or watch. But like the thing is so much of this is re rep it's all like repetitive. It's, it's the same exact strategy for everything. For every type of rock I draw. So I feel like, I don't know, it's just weird to do it over and over again. <laughs> like, maybe boring for you guys. No, he's purring.
silly little boy. <laughs> Any types of rock that are unique in strategy. Uh, I feel like not not really. Um. Well, this kind of well, no, because I I always use the same, uh, like the way I start with the basic shapes and then build up on top of that is exactly the same for no for them no matter what I'm drawing. I think one thing that helps is, I mean, getting a good handle on perspective definitely helps rocks, and that's that is it's like. That is its own big topic. <laughs> um, so when you're first starting out, if you use a reference photo as inspiration, or if you just want to like study a specific reference photo, um, to to start off with that reference photo. Well, in the Skillshare class that I have, I I go through like literally step by step how I look at the reference and how I break it down into shapes and then build it up into the drawing, um, because it is so much about just thinking about it in basic shapes like cubes stacked up on top of each other or circles or whatever and then as I was saying earlier I like chip away at it until it looks more like a rock <laughs> because it's not just gonna stay a cube or anything how do you filter out what you see and simplify uh, I'm well again I have a lot of step-by-step -step stuff in the Skillshare class but when I'm looking at the reference photo, like if I if I show you on my iPad, if if I'm looking at this one, which is the one we were kind of just using as inspiration. Let me open it in Procreate really quick. All right, so I just opened that in Procreate and we'll crop it. <laughs> I had to find my pencil. Um, what I try to think about is finding the major, oops, yeah, let's use red or something really noticeable. You see that? So I try to think about finding the major planes. Um, if I'm not starting off with like a cube or something, I try to simplify it like this. And this is why perspective is so important. It's really hard to see cubes or shapes without really understanding perspective. So if you are new to perspective, practice drawing cubes in space. And this is like the messiest version ever, <laughs> but like different sizes, different angles, um, different I don't know, like just try all these different shapes, really simple shapes. Oops. And then when you're drawing shapes that are more complicated, it's much easier to see that kind of thing, you know, and you can, oops, you can do that for anything you see in this. And then from here, you can start breaking them down into more and more complicated shapes. But by doing this, you're seeing like bigger planes and that's all shadow, that's all shadow, you know what I mean? Perspective! <laughs> yeah, and it, like, I think we can all improve our perspective all the time. Like, I, I feel like a noob with perspective. And I know professional artists who do, like, comic book art, and they're constantly practicing their perspective. It's not something you just like learn by watching something. 
<laughs> or like you can understand, you can learn from someone and understand the basic concepts of it, but then you actually have to sit down and do it because there's a disconnect between your brain and your hand with all types of art, <laughs> but with drawing, especially like, even though you know it's supposed to look like a certain thing until you draw it a, a hundred times or maybe, you know, it's different for everything, but until you draw it many, many, many times like that, it doesn't like translate to the paper. <laughs> Which can be very frustrating. It's like, you know what it's supposed to look like and it's in your head, but then it doesn't look like that on the paper. But that is where the practice comes in. Ugh. Okay, burrito. <laughs> uh, where in Discord are they posting? Just in the art chat, I believe. So if you go into the Discord, you'll see you'll see like public chat, introduce yourself, art chat. So go in the art chat and then um, there's one in there already. And there's like a bunch of different chats, but the art one is usually where we do that. Ooh, woosie, those are amazing. Oh my God, I love them. Okay, woosie is another rock pro. Totally rock pro. This is how it looks now. Um, excuse me, <laughs> Epic. Why are you saying those look bad? Those are great. I think you're, you're, you shouldn't compare what you see on my page. Unless you've drawn this rock or drawn rocks as many times as I have or as many times as Woosie has, you know, that's, it's pointless to compare. But yours are looking really good. Like you have, there's a couple spots where I think the shading is really exaggerated. You went really, really dark in a few spots, um, which can be its own kind of style. Like if you look at uh, brush, pen, brush, yeah, brush, pen, or brush, ink, ink, brush, <laughs> drawings. Sorry, I can't remember what the term is. They have to use like really solid shapes for things because they only have that one level of darkness. They can't shade subtly. And that's kind of what yours are reminding me of, but in a way it's really cool. Dorothea, you're Fio. Oh, hi. <laughs> Feels good to, to draw. Oh, good. You've drawn 200 boxes already, and I'm not even at the part of the course that makes you draw 250 of them. Oh my god. Yeah, but over... I don't even know how many thousands of boxes I've drawn over the years. Like, it's endless. It's countless. <laughs> but it, there comes a point when you are drawing those boxes in perspective when you can just you can just jump straight to shapes instead of like having to draw the basic box and then building up the shapes on top of it. That eventually happens. And that's why you can watch those comic book artists draw anything in any perspective because they have done it so many times. They know what the, sh the basic shapes are. They can visualize them without having to draw them. I'm hoping I'll get there someday. <laughs> I can do it a little bit with some things, but, but it's, just, it's much more of a struggle without drawing the basic shapes first. Digit, Discord is asking for your four digit tag. Um, no, don't, I don't know what you're doing, but just click on this link. And then post it in the art chat. If you're probably trying to message it to me or something weird. I only add people I know like in person as friends on Discord or known for years and years and years. Which if you are new to Discord, don't ever add people as friends unless you know them really well and never click on a link that somebody sends you unless you know them. And even then their account might have been hacked and they could be sending you a link, a bad link. So just be careful because there are a few cases where like I've seen in different art communities where like um, bots get in or malicious people get in and they try to hurt people by posting bad links. It's the same with emails. It's the same with anything online. Just be careful, guys. Oh, 
All right. Yeah, okay. All right, and okay. I think I'm going to end it here because unless you guys have any other questions uh, or want to see anything specific, I this kind of thing is something that takes hours. This took me three hours. So sitting down to draw this is not like... It doesn't ju it just doesn't come to be really fast for me anyway um so if you're interested in doing something like this give yourself or be patient with yourself <laughs> it's i started the same exact way as i did just now when i showed you my strategy i started with like a big oval and then i broke it down into little ovals and then i started working on individual sections and it was many episodes of uh, Breaking Bad and lots and lots of just like little changes and like oh that kind of works and then little changes <laughs> so start with something really simple like these balancing stones and or you can just like try to draw like a pile of stones a pile of rocks I think starting with the smoother stones really helps like the smoother um, round stones because they're much easier to see and much easier to draw and then once you start getting comfortable you can kind of like chisel away at the at one side and and start drawing the more jagged sharp rocks at least that's how I did it <laughs> that's how I learned so I think I am gonna end the stream and i hope you guys had fun i will i'll set up another stream some point at some point soon uh, next week i'm streaming on monday on twitch and then i'm gonna do a patreon stream so i'll just be posting a youtube video next week but no stream but thank you so much for being here i hope you had fun and feel inspired to sketch i We'll be sketching more rocks tonight when I'm chilling with Wolfie on the couch. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. And also don't forget that uh, if you want to draw more rocks or learn more from my strategy, I have that Skillshare class um, and I posted a video today so you can go watch that if you haven't already. So thanks guys. I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye.